In this tutorial, we are going to get hands on and set up and run our very first Google Chat app using Google Apps Script. Now, before we get started, in the previous tutorial, we covered how to develop Google Chat apps using Google Apps Scripts. If you're interested in seeing a summary of that before you dive into this hands on tutorial, please go back to that one. But for now, let's get started. First thing we need to do is go into our Google Apps Script main page, and we can do that with script.google.com. And we can create our chat app by hand, but Google has already created a awesome template for us. So what we're gonna do is go to getting started here. And we're just gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and select chat app. Cool. So for a chat app to run, it actually has a number of custom function triggers that are required for the chat app to run. So we can see here, we've got the on message trigger, the on add to space trigger and on remove from space trigger. The on add to space and remove from space triggers are required if you want your chat app to be part of a Google chat group space. And the on message trigger is mandatory if you want it for a DM or a group space. Basically, you can run a very basic chat app just using these functions. Let's head over to our app script JSON file here. Now, if you don't have access to that, you can always go down to project settings and make sure show app script JSON file manifest file in editor is selected. Okay, let's head back to our editor. You can see here, apart from all the standard details in an app script JSON file, there is also a chat property here. Now the documentation also recommends that we add an extra property inside our chat called add to space fallback message. And we'll just put a comment in there along the lines of chat app now added. Thanks. So sometimes a chat app can be added to a Google space without authorization being pushed through, in which case there's going to be no message. So this add to space fallback message occurs when the chat app is added for the first time. And then this response will come onto the screen, chat app now added, thanks. And then we can run the chat app and perhaps on the first time we have to go through authorization and everything works after that. Okay, cool, let's save that. And let's go ahead and rename our project. Let's say we're going to start the beginning of a currency converter chat app. So let's call this currency converter. And we'll say YouTube, so we know what it's for. I'll hit rename. Cool. What we need to do now is to connect this to a Google Cloud project. So what we can do here is go to project settings, scroll down to the section where it says Google Cloud Platform or GCP project, and we're going to change the project here. And this gives us some instructions on how to get a GCP project number. So there's a little link here that'll get us straight to the console. So let's go and click on that. And more often than not, you're probably going to create a new project if you're going to create a chat app. What we're going to do is click on the drop down menu for our current project. I'm in a previous currency converter chat app project. I did it in preparation for this video. So we can just click on that. Our pop up window will appear and we're going to select new project. And for our project name, let's call it currency converter and dash YouTube so we don't get confused. And I'll keep it in my organization and my location is fine. Let's select create now. Let's go to select project. So we're in the correct project now. And now we've got our project number, project ID and everything we need to get started. Before we can connect our project number to our Google Apps Script project, we need to update our OAuth consent screen. So let's go over to APIs and services down to OAuth consent screen. And we just want our project to be internal. So within our organization, for me, that's in my yagisanatoday.com domain account. And I'm gonna select create. And our app name is currency converter dash YouTube. And my support email is just going to be me. We don't need any of this for the time being. We can skip all that. Let me just check. We need a developer email contact. Let's make it the same one, Scott. And those are the three items that we need here. Save and continue. 
we don't have anything in our scopes we're not referencing Google Sheets or anything right now so we don't need to add anything here so let's save and continue and this is just a summary so we'll go back to dashboard cool so our OAuth consent screen is all set up let's head back to the dashboard to get our number and now we're going to select the project number here and then go down to the GCP project number and hit control V and hit set project. Cool. Now our Google Apps Script project is connected to this GCP project here. Next thing we need to do is to go to our library and we need to add the Google Chat API. So we're going to look up Google Chat and there it is there and we'll select it. And we're going to select enable here. And this will navigate us to the Google Chat API dashboard. So the main thing we need to do here is configure the Chat App API for us to run it. So let's go to configuration here. And our app name is currency converter. And we'll just say YouTube so we know what we're talking about. The avatar URL, well, I've got one in my notepad here. So I'm just going to select this, control C and control V. Now you can grab this in the description in the notes below the video. And our description is only 40 characters, so we need to make it succinct. Let's just say converts international currencies. Cool. All right, so functionality. Receive one-to-one -one messages. That means we can create a direct message to our chat app, our currency converter chat app. Yes, we do. Do we want it to join spaces? So that means if I've created a space with the rest of my organization, do I want the chat app to be able to be added to that? Yes, I do. And I want to be able to use my chat app to display currency conversions so the rest of my team can see. And I even want my team members to be able to use the chat app to show me currency conversions. So let's select join spaces and group conversations. And we also want to log errors to the cloud console. So that's error logging for the GCP here. Okay, so connection settings. Let's click on the App Script project here. Now we need a deployment ID. Let's head back to our Google App Script project and select Deploy, New Deployment. And our description is Initial Deployment. That'll do. And we'll keep it as an add on because it essentially is. And we can see Applications Chat. Fantastic. Let's hit Deploy. And now we've got our deployment ID. We're going to copy that and head back to our GCP project in the chat app API dashboard and copy and paste the deployment ID here. All right. For now, we're going to leave slash commands and link previews alone, but we'll get to slash commands in future tutorials. And let's head down to permissions. Now we can choose for everyone in my organization to install this chat app, or we can just allow specific people or groups in my domain to install the chat app. While I'm testing, I'm just going to make it me. So I'm just going to say Scott at Yagi today.com and hit save. Cool. So that should be everything now. Our GCP project's pretty much good. Our currency converter is okay. We've all set up with our first version. Let's head back to our chat app and see if we can find it. Let's create a DM first. Let's go to chat and we'll hit the plus start a chat button and find apps. And let's see if we can find currency converter. There is currency converter YouTube. Sweet. All right, let's add this as a chat for now. And it's come up here, awesome. And it says, thank you for adding me to a DM, Scott Donald. And let's just say, hey, uh, currency converter. And right now it's just repeating everything we say. You said, hey, a currency converter. How's this happening? Let's go over to our script now. We know it's working, that's good. Okay, so what's happening here? So on the message, we've re we're receiving an event here. That event is a JSON object. And inside that object, there is event space type DM. So it's saying, okay, we're in DMs. So we need to add you here. 
Next, we set the variable message where name is going to be you here. Said, and then it said event message text. That's going to be the text that I said in my DM, which was, hey, a currency converter. Let's have a quick peek at this event. This uh, console.log, and we'll say json.stringify so we can see all the sub objects. And we'll say event, and then we'll say null. Then we'll put in just a little space there and hit save. At the time of writing this, we don't have access to the head deployment in the new IDE. So we'll need to make a direct update. So let's go to deploy, manage deployments, and then we'll just change our version here. So we'll say new version. And instead of initial deployment now, we'll just say uh, added logging and hit deploy. Cool, select done. And let's go over to our currency converter now. And let's say, uh, I did it all for the logging. Oh, and we've got an error, no worries. Let's just head back here. Uh, right, okay, I can't spell stringify. Stringify, there we go. Hit save. And let's just uh, do another deployment. Hit controls, and then we'll go new. Added logging, excellent, deploy. The logging. Okay, cool, we've got a response there. Let's go back to our Google Apps Script file and select done here. Let's just go over to our executions and see our results now. So each message that occurs inside your Google space or your direct message is going to return an event message like this. So there's a lot to unpack here, but we'll just go through a couple of basic things. But if you're playing along, you'll be able to see a similar message anyway. Okay, so we've got the space names, but we can have a look at the text message here. So we've got text here. So the logging was the message that I wrote and it comes back with the text message. So if we have a look at our script, we can see that we use the event message and text object path to display my previous text message. Let's head back to our executions. We can also get some really interesting information like selecting the avatar of the person who sent the message. So if I select all of this URL, hit control C and pop this in a new tab, you can see my avatar. We've also got the time in seconds and nanoseconds of when the message occurred. You can also see the name of the person who sent the message. The JSON data will be added to in the condition when things like slash commands or attachments are added to the message. Awesome. So that's the basics of getting your Google Chat app up and running in Google Apps Scripts. In the next tutorial, we'll start building out our currency converter and working with slash commands. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please click that like button. And if you want to get a notification of when the next tutorial comes out, hit that notification bell. Until next time.